Hello again and welcome back to another episode of Garage Science. This time we're going to be modifying our projector once again and we're going to uh, increase the UV light output on it by removing the ultraviolet filter on the front of the halogen lamp inside the projector. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the projector from your printer. And you'll see uh, my projector has a threaded stud sticking out of the top of it and that's from a different modification I was attempting to make uh, where I was trying to reposition the lamp inside the projector and uh, that did not work out very well. I don't recommend that you try and make a modification like that. There's a screw on the front that we'll be taking off in order to remove the top cover that will give us access to the projector lamp. Now we can push down and slide sideways the cover and pull it off. Once you pull that off, you'll see that there's a piece of plastic that will be uh, taped down over the top of the cavity. You want to go ahead and pull that off. That's just to help keep dust um, out from the inside of the projector. There will be one screw holding the projector lamp in. The screw I have in there uses an Allen head, uh, but the standard screw that's used in an Acer projector is a Phillips head. So you're going to want a Phillips head screwdriver handy to take this screw out. Once your screw is removed, you can simply use the small handle on the top and just slowly pull the lamp out. There will be power wires going into a socket that you'll have to remove. And once those wires are removed, your lamp is completely removed from your projector. And there's the piece of glass on the front that is what we'll be removing. And that little piece of glass filters out most of the UV light coming from the halogen lamp. Once you have the lamp out, it's a good idea to go ahead and put the plastic cover back on the top of your projector just to keep dust from getting to the inside. Now with our lamp removed, there's one screw on the side that we'll have to take out in order to remove the UV light filter. With that screw removed, the small cover that holds the piece of glass down can be removed. And then you can slowly pry the piece of glass out of the lamp. That film that's on the top of the glass is what filters the ultraviolet light out from the lamp's output. And with that glass removed, you can actually see into the lamp where the actual halogen bulb is. All right, so we're gonna reassemble the lamp. And we're now ready to reinstall the lamp back into the projector. Simply reconnect the cable and set the lamp gently into the projector. Since I'm already here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this threaded stud off the lamp. There's no need for it and it's just gonna get in the way. Now, because we've removed a filter for the ultraviolet light, that means there will be more light output coming from the lamp into the optics assembly of your projector, and that can cause those components to heat up uh, quite a bit faster and uh, to higher temperatures. So you wanna make sure you have really good cooling for your projector if you're gonna make this modification. All in all, it only takes about five minutes to disassemble the projector, remove the light filter, and reassemble. What I've done is I've created a makeshift cardboard duct that will direct air from the printer's cooling fans directly into the projector. I've also installed an additional fan on the inlet for the printer, so I will get more airflow being sucked into the printer and sequentially into the projector. I've also wired these cooling fans to a switch on the top of the printer and I've installed an exhaust fan on the other side of the printer so that way as hot air is exhausted from the projector, it is immediately extracted out of the printer. By doing this, the inside of the printer will stay very cool and the projector will remain at a cool operating temperature. Now we simply have to reinstall the projector to the printer, reconnect all the cables, power on the printer, calibrate the magnification and focus for the projector's output, I've also installed an air filter to the inlet side of the printer, so that way the air that's sucked into the printer and then sent to the projector is filtered air just to minimize the amount of dust uh, from the extra cooling air being blown through it that uh, collects in the printer and in the projector. Now that our printer is ready to fill with resin and print our first part. What I'll be doing is using a exposure calibration part that will uh, allow us to see at what point the resin fails to cure. Basically the way this part is designed is there's 20 blocks. Each block has a square that will cure uh, during the last few layers of the print 
and the exposure times will vary for each block. So each filled block indicates an exposure time that was sufficient enough to cure the resin and any empty blocks will be exposure times that were too low to be able to actually cure the resin. And this was our final result. So the top left block was 30 seconds and the bottom right block was 10 seconds. So we can see as you travel along this part, uh, eventually at 10 seconds, we failed to cure resin, uh, meaning it only takes 11 seconds now to uh, cure this resin. Originally, it took 30 seconds to cure this resin, so we've actually cut our cure times down by 66%. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed already, I suggest that you do. And like this video if you enjoyed, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.